What's up, guys? This is Kyle from Wax Museum. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, as you can see here on the screen, I've got an older video pulled up from about a month ago from March 6th, where I showed off some um, cards that I took to Orlando to try and get Pacers autographs. And some of those cards were existing cards, and other cards were um, kind of custom cards that I could get signed. And since that time, I've had a lot of requests to make a video about how I actually constructed and how I made those custom cards. So I finally had a chance to do that and I wanna share that with you today. Um, so let me go ahead and pull up my first screen here. Um, I also wanna say that um, this is a process that I discovered on YouTube probably about a decade ago. And I wanted to just find that video so I could share it with you. That video is for whatever reason, long gone. I don't know if the owner deleted it or whatever, but that's long gone. So. I'm going to try and replicate that as best as I can for you from memory. It's a process I've been using for years. Um, it's not perfect, but at the same time, maybe it'll at least get you on the right path. And, and who knows, you guys are probably more crafty than I am. You can probably make better cards than I can. But um, it all starts off with this just basic 1200 by 800 pixel template here. I've got it pulled up in uh, Paint 3D. And um, what I do is I design my cards in here. So I want to put the, um, you'll actually want to put the front on the right side and you want to put the back on the left side. And then of course, if, if you want the card to have a different orientation, you've got to kind of change that up a little bit. Um, if you're better than me at photo editing, you're probably using Photoshop or something else. But anyway, that's where I design my card at. And it's important that you design it on this template, as you'll see as the process continues here. So just as an example, here's the Halliburton that I came up with for that Pacers game. And I came up with this um, kind of design that's very, very similar to Next Day Autograph. So it's, it's not necessarily original, but um, it, it, you know, I'm not looking to distribute these either. So it was just something for my personal use. Um, once I get these um, designs as I want them, then I will go to the Walgreens website and I'll upload them there. And I'm going to order four by six prints. And it's always a good idea to order a couple of each card, even if you only want to make one. That way, if you mess up, you can always um, you can always make them again. And they're not terribly expensive to order the prints. So that would be my suggestion. OK, so after you get home from Walgreens with your photos, you go to your garage or your shed or wherever you try to do manly stuff and um, you get your materials ready. So um, this is what your photos will, you know, look something like this. And I took some old ones I had here at the house from previous projects. Um, if you want to create a, a punch like that, I would recommend using uh, like a scrapbook punch. You can find them on Amazon or eBay. Um, you'll have to play around with this a little bit. I've ruined a lot of these because this is not a, a square, even though, you know, I'm using a square punch. So it takes a couple punches. Uh, you just got to practice a little bit with that. Okay, so you've got your photos. Here are the other things you'll need. You'll need poster board, just plain poster board. You can use a giant piece if you want to. This is a, a bigger piece that's been cut down. You don't need anything fancy here, just regular poster board. Um, you're going to need Elmer's spray adhesive, or I'm sure there are other adhesives that will work. This, this is just the one that I've used. And then um, I would also recommend a pair of pliers, and this is gonna be just to hold the item out so you don't get glue all over yourself, or at least you uh, reduce the amount of glue that you get all over yourself. Okay, um, so I'm going to take my two pieces of photo here and I'm going to prep them. And you want to fold them as if it would be the size of the card. So, you know, use that template that I gave you, you're folding it on that white line there. So that way I have them ready. That way when I spray them, I can adhere them to that uh, piece of poster board real quick. So I have that ready. Um, also, if you're going to make any relic cards, then you want to have those pieces ready and you want to have them in the direction that you're going to face them on the card. So I've got uh, just this old piece of post-it here that I drew a smiley face on. So I'm going to have that ready to insert into that card when that uh, material is wet. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to take this first one and I'm just going to hold it at the bottom with these pliers here. And I'll try and do it where you can see it. Um, you just want just a light, even coat. You just want to be consistent. Of course, I haven't used this in a while. I should have prepped it. Um, so it's going to look like that. Then you take it, uh, and you got to be quick here. You take your poster board, and you just fold it 
over the side of that poster board and you try and press everything down. You might want to have a paper towel handy in case there's some um, glue that gets on the outside. In this case, I didn't have any though. Okay, and you press that on there and you want to try and press every section down and try and keep this edge flush here if at all possible. Okay, so you see the card is adhered around the piece of poster board. Okay, um, next up I've got the relic. So that's a little trickier, but still not really all that bad. Um, so I need to look at my look at my uh, positioning here so I know how I'm going to insert this relic piece because I'm going to want this to basically fit in there like so. Okay, so I got to be ready uh, in order to do that. So um, I'll give it the same, you know, just same consistent coat here. I'm going to take my relic piece and carefully tear it on the back there. Um, and then I'm going to once again take that and adhere it. I don't know, did I leave enough space? Yes, I did. I'm going to adhere it. Oop, but I punched. I punched my finger through the relic. There we go. So it takes a little bit of practice. Um, it's a little easier if you're not holding it up in the air, you know. But uh, I got to do that for the sake of the video. So anyway, you end up with something like this. And my recommendation to let these dry a couple of hours. And I would even put, maybe put some pieces of cardboard around it and put some weight on it because you want to press those down. Um, that way the glue um, adheres everywhere that it should. And then um, through the magic of video editing, we'll come back here in a couple hours and we'll take a look and see what we have. Okay, so I let these um, two cards dry for about two and a half hours. Probably doesn't need that long, but I, I just want to make sure it has enough time. So still not a finished product, but we are definitely getting closer. So um, I want to, first off, just cut these off here so um, they're easier to work with. So I've got just like a standard Westcott paper trimmer here, no, probably for scrapbooking. I don't know. That's what a lot of this stuff seems to come from. So I've got this piece here that's got both cards on it, um, and it's just going to be a matter of, of trimming them out now. Actually, I might cut these apart with scissors to make it easier. That way I can cut the cards one at a time. Um, this takes a little bit of practice as well, learning you know where on the lines you want to cut and, and how it works with your cutter. I won't say that I've mastered this with mine necessarily, but um, you know, if, if I were to sit here and do three or four of these, the, the last couple would probably look a lot better. But uh, let's see if I can get this set up here to where it shows on the video. So I'm going to try and line up my white lines with my cutting line or maybe even a little bit more on the inside so the card's not oversized. And okay, so there's the first cut. I might not have even done it enough. We'll see. And here's our second cut. I'm doing this at a different angle than I normally would. I don't think these cuts are going to be right, but you get the gist on how it works. It also helps if I would have cut from the other side. Um, okay, and then finally our last cut here is that, um, and that, there we go. All right, so what you end up with, and, and the cuts weren't very good there, but I, um, if I was at a different angle, like I said, it'd be different. Um, so what you end up with is something like this, and, um, you can see, you know, it's, it's a little bit thicker of a card, um, a little bit flexible, which is nice. Um, you can autograph it or do whatever you need to do on there. Or if you've got, um, you know, you want to take it to a game and have somebody else sign it, that's an option as well. That's what I did with this uh, Tyrese Halliburton, and I feel like it turned out really well. Um, you've got the, um, they will not fit in a regular top loader. They're too thick for that, so I put them in a 55 point where they're they're a little loose in there, but... Um, Overall, I mean, I, I feel like it's a, a fairly decent quality custom, and um, who knows, maybe you can even modify it to do um, to be something better. So there you have it. That's my process for making customs. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful, and um, you know, let me know if you found any ways to perfect that. Let me know in the comments. And then, as always, 
There are new episodes of the podcast every Thursday. And thanks for watching.